questions. What do you think of the fact that Artosis had no anti-air all game long? Um, and are ground upgrades more important than the air upgrade for Broodlords? Let's just, let's just answer the first one. Um, because upgrades are a little tricky to discuss. And we want to have some variety in the question uh, givers. So what do you think of the fact that Artosis had no anti-air all game long? I want to point out that Artosis did have an overseer that was bouncing around. I'm aware of it because I've seen the replay before. And I focused more on the transitions that Artosis did. But with that Overseer, um, Artosis got a ton of information. He knew exactly what mix of buildings um, his opponent had. And let's actually check something really fast here. Let's actually um, go to the StarCraft 2. If we back up here, um, so this Starport does have a reactor, but I'm actually going to move my overlay out of the way really fast here. So let's actually rewind to some time in the mid-game. And uh, yeah, it looks like this reactor yeah, this is a really late reactor on this starport. 15 minutes into the game, still no reactor. And I think if we go to the Artosis cam, I think he is, at the very least, aware of all these barracks that are here. And, you know, advancing farther along in the game. 16-minute uh, mark. So let's see, how much does Artosis know? You know, I actually would say that this is a little bit of a misstep then that Artosis didn't check this. I will note that it was possible for Artosis to check it and get a good idea what was up there. I don't know if it's the biggest point of vulnerability, because if you wanted to get a ton of air and really try to snap Zerg apart in one big blow, you'd need definitely more than one Banshee. And if you're getting more than one Banshee, you know, like three, four, five Banshees or something like that, that is a big resource investment and i wonder exactly how much you'd have to sacrifice it's it's a little bit close though so that would be something that would require a little bit more testing but if i were artosis and i wanted to make sure the style worked as long as possible i would be a lot more active scouting about with my overseers because hell if i don't see any vikings what's stopping me from scouting into his base every three or four minutes and also um you know doing the changeling drops or going to be good so um that's how i would i would do it i would make sure that there's no air coming oh and and drive tv also asked the same question um but you know i, I and since a lot of people jesus there's like four or five people asking about this you know no air thing yeah i would just say that a lot of times there's this th this it's it's so hard to resist this mindset but every time you go well, why didn't this happen Make sure you don't have this this following general mistake. Wouldn't it be great if I had blank right now? That doesn't mean that you should try to get that. So for instance, you look at this game and you say, well, air would be good right now because he doesn't have any anti-air units. But, but the process of getting there is such a big investment and takes so much time that... It's a little, it's un, It's unclear if that would end up being okay. So that's how I would put it. Now, be careful of getting into, is this good right now? Or, or, or don't fall, fall for the trap of saying, this would be good now, therefore I should go for this in my next game. Uh, it can be very, very damaging to your play to put in too much of this. Um, so yes. So yes. Dum, 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 dum. Um, so, um, Obitus X says, it didn't really seem like the amount of overlords and banelings required for the drops was all that worth it. Um, I would actually, so I think that's, that's the sort of thing that you perceive to be true. You know, you see that the drops, they did, they did some pretty decent hits there, especially in that first battle. But it's important to first picture an army of all roaches. Very easy for Terran to deal with incredibly easy for hell any race to deal with all roaches so we're going to need a little bit something else and banelings end up being pretty good especially if we have a lot of money banelings zergling but the thing to note is that because roaches are ranged so they naturally form these tight arcs where all of them are trying to shoot it blocks the banelings from getting in there and I want you to recall that in the middle of the game, Artosis ran up with 15 or so Banelings, two tank shots, killed like nine of them. So easy to pick off Banelings unless they're in the Overlords. So really, without the Overlords, the Banelings really were 
not going to be able to do much of anything. But with the Overlords, really drastically, dramatically spike that up. So I actually do defend that idea. I think that um, it's, it's a pretty cool mix. I like that quite a bit. So I will just take one or two more questions. Um, so let us let us see. Do, 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 do. Um, um, yeah, you know. Okay, so here's a great, great question by L Solar. I'll actually take this as the last question because it's um it's a good final one. So he says, day nine. It seems to me that Artosis' strategy was I'm getting everything. Is it really worth it to invest that much on upgrades and tech? You've always said good build orders flow well one step into another. So, um, hmm, so what are some of the things that I think Artosis could have pulled away? So, I feel like that if you get a huge lead, first of all, let's pretend that we're in a situation where we have a big lead. We should get things that guarantee us a win. So, for instance, if I get a huge lead, I shouldn't attack now. Um, you know, I, I, if I could do that and win, that's okay, but there's no need to do that. Getting things like more upgrades helps guarantee our win later. So I feel like that, that perhaps could have informed Artosis' decision-making quite a bit. Um, but the getting everything sort of occurred after Artosis had five bases. That's really when he started to get, you know, a lot of the... Um, the extra melee upgrades, and that's when he's really starting to get his hive tech in gear... Back up to when he had three bases. Not very much was happening there. It was um, basically Zerglings, Roaches, and Banelings. And then as time progressed and he got more money and had more money to get more upgrades, it was just um, the tunneling upgrade for the Roaches and then the Overlord drop. Um, but note the big things that Artosis was cutting out. He was cutting out Hydralisks and all their upgrades, and Hydralisks are really expensive. He was cutting out a lot of Infestors, didn't really do much with Ultralisks. I still think that some more smoothing could have happened um, in, in the process of playing through that. Um, perhaps just getting an extra queen and spreading more creep and then relying more on flanking uh, instead of the dropping. That would be a possible way to work that out. But um, again, I think that's a great mindset that L Solar pointed out, and that's definitely something that I, you know spread a lot, I'm, I endorse that a lot, is to try to trim away a lot of fat in your, in your builds. Try to make them very lean and, and focused. Because it's really easy, again, if you fall into that, well, what would be good now syndrome? You convince yourself that you should have 100% of everything every game, which is wrong. <laughs> um, you still can get a decent amount of upgrades. You know, you can't just get one unit and only the upgrades for that and expect to win. Um, so I did like that Artosis had a lot of leanness to this play, especially from the um, early game into the mid game. Really just added in roaches, banelings, and upgrades. It's the only things he really added in stepping into the mid game, and I thought that was quite fancy. So um, since we've been going for about an hour now, I am going to wrap up Day 9 Daily number 141. Big thanks to our good friend Artosis for um, allowing me to use his replays for the daily and for making that replay pack available. Um, yeah, and definitely follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash day9tv. Follow me on YouTube, youtube.com slash day9tv. And um, take it easy, guys. I have some cool announcements coming up in the coming days, so I can't wait to make those public. Um, but yes, I'll wrap it up, and thanks so much for tuning in, and see ya!